Hello everybody, how's it going? I just dropped off Penny at the, the summer camp. She is very excited to be there. I'm going to be here with you guys. We haven't done a filmmaking vlog in a while, so that's what we're going to do. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Alejandro and on this channel we talk about family, fun, and filmmaking. We are here at Mendham Ponds again and I am currently on the same trail I was a couple episodes ago but I'm going to actually be going to a another trail that actually splits off of this trail. Today's hike is going to be a little bit different. I actually brought some extra equipment. I have my camera that I did the last time and last time I was just kind of exploring and looking around. This time I also brought my um, telephoto lens and with the telephoto lens it's actually going to allow me to get out further and closer to things that I see. Um, I already had a chance to get an awesome picture of a deer in the forest. Um, I'll upload that to Instagram. Link down below if you guys are interested in checking that out. I also have my tripod. I will show you that in a few minutes. It's actually attached to my backpack and it's a little bit hard to reach to. We're going to go out to another part of the trail that we haven't been onto. It's actually a secondary trail that loops right off of this trail. We made it to the second part of the trail, the loop. It's actually called Quaker Pond Trail Loop. And on this loop, when I was looking it up online, it says that there's evidence of beavers and there are bridges to cross and things like that. So that should be really exciting and kind of interesting to look at. I've never been on this trail before, so we're definitely going to check that out. So I also wonder if there was something to do with beavers for that last tree that we saw a few episodes ago that was fallen and that I climbed all over. I don't know. Probably not, but maybe. I don't know. What I am going to be attempting to do on this trail is actually something that's called a hyperlapse. A hyperlapse is a type of time lapse, but it actually includes movement through a space. And that's what I'm going to be doing. The first one that I'm going to do, because I've never been on this trail before, is actually do a whole loop. This is a little bit over two miles for the loop, so I just want to go along the path and do a hyperlapse of the whole trail and see how that looks. Um, I'm doing this for a challenge video that is from uh, Yankees Outdoors Adventure and he'll be uploading the challenge videos uh, sometime soon. As soon as he does, I'll make sure to put a card at the end of the video for you guys. Okay, so I am here. I'm recording with my cell phone so that way I can show you what we are doing here on the camera to do the hyperlapse. For the hyperlapse I actually don't need the microphone because it's going to be a whole bunch of photographs that we're taking and I also added my ND filter so that way I can control the amount of light coming into the sensor As you can see, I have switched over to manual focus, both on the lens and on the body of the camera. Let's turn on the camera really quick. So you might not be, okay, maybe you can see it. I have the rule of thirds on right now with my camera. So I, what I'm going to try to do with each shot is line up the um, horizon with the lower third here and then keep the trail within the um, two thirds that we have here so that way I have some sort of reference to actually figure out how we are going to be shooting these and to make sure that we have the camera aligned in each shot. Looking at my settings I am actually shooting two seconds per frame so it should give us a nice crisp image. I am going to be using f2.8 on this lens so that as wide as my aperture goes and the ISO is as low as it goes to try to keep as little noise as possible in my image. Okay so what I'm going to be doing now is taking one photo and then taking a big step forward. I'm gonna take 
a step like that and then I'm going to take another photo and I'm going to keep on doing this process all the way around the loop so that should give us an idea of what the loop is going to be doing. Also keep in mind that I'm going to be rendering my final video at 24 frames a second so each picture that I do when it gets up to 24 of them it's going to make one second of video. I can also play around with some time ramping and things like that to see if I can manipulate the image and get it to kind of look a little bit more interesting with the timing and the music that I choose to go with. Alright so let's get started. Okay so I'll do the first photo with you guys. There we go, we took one photo. I am going to place my foot right at the back of the tripod so that way I can be kind of consistent. Take one step forward, grab the tripod, and put it right in front of my feet again. Now I'm going to make sure that I line up the shot again. It is in the thirds, the horizon is a little bit uh, low, so I am going to adjust that. Because we are actually on a little hill, so as it evens out, we're going to have to make slight adjustments. And then take another photo. So uh, if we want to, we can go back in and check the photos and see what's going on so you can kind of get an idea of what that video is going to start looking like. Alright, so I'm going to do it again. Lined up with my feet right in front. Take a big step forward. Move the camera. And line up the shot. So here I am not quite lined up the way I had it before, so I'm gonna put the thirds in the trail again. And let's check the horizon, and it is not lined up, so I am going to move up the horizon like that and take the photo. So I'm gonna repeat this for a little bit over two miles. Let's see how it goes. Okay, something that I've noticed that I needed to do that I'm glad I had my ND filter for is that the lighting has changed dramatically from where I was before to where I am now and I needed to adjust the amount of light that was coming in without changing any of the settings. So what I'm doing is that my ND filter is actually a um, variable ND filter, so I adjust the um, amount of light that it's letting in a tiny bit in each shot so that way we can uh, compensate for the extra light in the exposure so hopefully that works out we'll see okay, so there is actually a really kind of cool feature over there with the bridge but the trail keeps on going that way so what I'm going to try to do is do a little bit of a pan as we move across so that we can see the bridge and then I'll adjust back the other way and I'm just gonna slightly each uh, shot rotate the camera a little bit so that we can see it and then I'll slowly rotate it back. See if it works. Uh, hopefully, if not, oh well. Just made it past that pan. I think it's gonna look really cool so hopefully it does. I am at this big huge tree right here. I've done some kind of moves with the camera as I'm going around and looking at this. I actually think I went off the trail, so I'm going to be turning around. I'm not going to end up doing the whole loop like I planned, but I think it's going to turn out really cool anyway. Okay, so I'm still working on this transition at the end, and I ran out of batteries on my camera. Luckily, I brought some backup, so always make sure that you bring up backup batteries and memory. All right, I'm going to keep on going. Another cool thing to notice is that I have a quick release on my tripod and I think most camera tripods do have this quick release but that allows me to keep the tripod right here exactly where I want it to be and be able to line it up right away without uh, changing the shot so um, yeah the tripod helps a lot to be able to do that and line up the shots exactly the way you want to. Also making sure that you have a feature that you're trying to aim at 
uh, and try to make sure that it is on one of the autofocus points or on one of the th uh, third marks or something like that so that way you can make sure that it's exactly lined up where you want it to be. Okay, so the camera is way down there. I have to set up my shot like this, almost aiming at the ground so that you can see where the camera is. I am trying to whoa, um, get it under this twig over here and I am just a tiny bit too high for it. I'm going to try to see if I can take off the uh, microphone and if that's enough. If not, I might have to do a couple handheld shots, but I think it's going to be really cool. I'm trying to stay as still as possible uh, for two seconds so that way it's not too blurry. Okay, so look at the shot right here. We have it lined up right underneath the uh, branch. Actually, it's going to hit the branch, but you look at the shot it looks kind of cool and by the time I take the next step it's actually going to be right past this so I don't think I need to um, actually adjust anything by taking it off because I'm just gonna be right past it anyways all right I just wanted to show you how that's looking right there and the knot of the tree is right there so I'm trying to line it up and get there as um, cool as a way as possible all right Okay, so I finished that sequence and I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I am walking back trying to find the trail now because like I said, I accidentally went off of it. I don't know if it was just that I went off on a side trail that's not really the trail or if it's just not well maintained. I'm assuming that it is the first thing that I actually went on a trail that was not really the trail. But I did get to see all these cool things out here. There's a lot of um, trees that are falling down. And then after I did a little research this morning, I really feel that all these trees that are knocked down are from beavers. Um, so it's really kind of cool. Oh, check out this mushroom. This is actually really cool on the tree. Luckily enough, I didn't wander too far off from the bridge, which I know is part of the trail. Um, I have about an hour before picking up Penny, so I might be able to do one more time lapse or just enjoy the hike. I think I might end up doing that. I don't know. Oh, I got an idea for one, so I'll show you guys in a minute when I find something that I could do this idea with. All right. Okay, I found, whoa, I found the trail where it started getting a little bit rough. So that means I'm back on track. I know exactly where I'm at. Not lost, at least I still have my GPS just in case, but I should be fine. Let's find a cool spot to do this next time lapse. So I found a blue trailhead and that means I'm back on track. The yellow one is the one that I did before and the blue one is the one I'm trying to be on. So the path looks much more well maintained over here. Okay, so I missed a few shots that I could have gotten on for photos of animals because I had my vlogging lens on rather than my telephoto. So I am going to try and use well, I've attached my telephoto lens and I'm going to see if I can get some more photos while I'm on this hike. Um, I have about an hour before I have to pick up Penny, so I want to make sure that I turn back around when I have at least... So I want to make... There is an airplane! Alright, I think it's far enough away now, so continuing on, i just going to walk a little bit further and I'm going to make sure that I start heading back when I have half an hour left before I have to pick her up, so that way I can get back on time. Okay, so on this trail I think it's pretty cool. If you check this out, uh, the trail over there had a whole bunch of awesome benches over here. We have benches that look like this.
This is really cool over here. There are some fallen trees, but they've been here for a really long time. At least I think so, because they're already decomposing and kind of falling apart. It looks really cool. Check it out. Alright, so I think that was really cool. We're going to continue on, see what else we can find. I am at 11.30. I have half an hour to get back to pick up Penelope, but I found where I wanted to do the shot for the next time lapse. So I'm going to do it really quick. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I have two different lenses. One's a more wide angle lens that I use for vlogging and then this is a telephoto lens to get out close to things. And what I'm going to do is have the camera in one spot and I'm going to slowly zoom in to an object. And um, when I do that, I'm going to go like and I'm going to transition from one lens to the other so the vlogging camera which is the more wide angle lens is a 16 to 50 and then this is a 55 to 200 so it should get the range all the way from 60 millimeter all the way to 200 so let's see how that turns out okay so I have the camera set up and what I'm going to do is focus it in all the way where I want it to be and then I'm going to start pulling out but when I actually play the video sequence it's, it's going to be in reverse it's going to be like really wide out and then it's going to push right into that object that I want to focus on so by doing it in reverse it actually makes it a little bit easier to get the composition exactly the way you want it all right I'm gonna do this real quick and then I'm gonna run and pick up Penny Okay, swapping out the lens now. I need to make sure that I'm using the exact same settings. I'm at 5.6 uh, for the aperture, uh, 100 ISO, and 1 640th of a second for the shutter speed. So, and I'm all the way down to 50 millimeters on the lens. So I'm gonna start on 50 millimeters on this one and go all the way to 16. Okay, I just finished the shot. I have about 15 minutes left to go pick up Penny, so I gotta run. <laughs> okay, so really quickly while I'm trying to walk back, uh, one of the cool things about the shot that I just did, as it's hyperlapse rather than doing it by hand and being able to zoom in close to an object is that I have two lenses that I can cycle through so that I get a wider range. And also the images that I shot are over 20K images. So that means that I can also in post zoom in even closer to an object. So I'm gonna do the hyperlapse, but then I'm also going to do a post move. So that way I can get it even more dynamic and look, make it look like it gets even closer to the object. And I'm gonna show you guys the range right now. So take a look, this is where we started off really zoomed in. And now this is where we ended off when we see it all the way zoomed out. The sequence only needs to be 30 seconds and I'm not sure if I have enough video to be able to capture all of that with the hyperlapse, time-lapse types of stuff that I'm doing, but hopefully I do. If I shoot any more, I'll let you guys know. Also, if you want to see the final results, uh, make sure to check out Yankee's Outdoor Adventure. He's going to be hosting the challenge so you can see all of the final versions of the time lapses there on his channel. All right, still got to run. Whew, made it to the split. I'm about halfway and I have eight minutes left. Uh, you can see it says no skiing on this trail, but it doesn't say no running. So let's keep on running. <laughs> Three minutes, I'm getting close. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna keep on running. <sighs> I'm tired. It is noon right now. I'm about a minute away from the entrance and the camp is right there. So, gotta run a little bit more. Okay, we made it to the entrance. Gonna pick up Penny now. See you guys in a minute. 
Okay, so I picked up Penny. I was only a couple minutes late. Penny is playing at the playground. There's other kids here today, so I don't want to record uh, when there's other kids around, but she's having fun. I have another idea for a, a time lapse that I think will be pretty cool. It's kind of combining a couple techniques, so we'll see how that goes. And for right now, we're just gonna enjoy the playground and have a little bit of fun. Uh, we'll see you when I start the next time lapse. Look at the sky. I think I want to do something with these beautiful clouds. There's some amazing clouds out today. All right, see you guys in a moment. I was just here browsing the internet, checking out Twitter and Facebook, and then I had this little caterpillar start crawling on top of me, so I recorded it. It's really kind of cool. <laughs> Okay, so we came back to Menden Ponds earlier, Penny was playing, we actually, instead of doing the shot that I wanted to then, um, we left so that I can get her some food, and we came back close to sunset. The sun is setting over behind us now, and it is really awesome. I'm going to be a little bit quiet here because there were some deer over there, and, and I'm going to try and get the shot of the deers as a little time lapse, so let's see if that works. So we're outside at night right now and we're just doing a basic time lapse. If you look at here, I have a tripod and I'm doing like 30 second exposures and just taking a whole bunch of photos to kind of get the landscape at night. And we're also trying to look for bears or stuff. Yeah, they're scary. There were actually some deer that got like 10 feet away from us. We had to scare them away. So we finished recording. It is like 10. 45 right now. We got here around 8.30, so we're gonna go home. Wanna see our view? Yeah. <laughs> it's really dark out here. Okay, that was with the light on too. All right, so we'll see you guys next time. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!